So we're back with the quad. We are going to just fiddle fuck with it today to a point where I can just hit this button and it'll just start because it has an issue starting, mostly with the carburetor being adjusted, it needs to be adjusted. So we got about 10 of these solenoids for starting. I have the other nine in there. We're going to replace that one and we're just going to keep fiddle fucking with it until we can finally get it to run off one start of the button. So turn the carb and let's get it started. All right, so the new one's installed. Let's see if it is, see if it turns. Yep. So now I'm going to turn the carburetor sideways. I'm going to grab the fuel bolt and turn it in a turn it in all the way and then go a turn and a half out, which is what they tell you to actually start with and then we'll go from there. So, let's see if we can turn this carb. Oh, we're going to have to loosen some stuff first. All right, so we're gonna go a turn and a half out, so that's all the way in. So I'm gonna go one whole turn. That's half. It's one. And we'll give it just another half. And we'll start with there. Turn my hair back. There it was. Cool. And we'll start with that. So sure as shit, messing around with it, we found out why it generally won't start. And uh, that's because a new one of these is supposed to have compression around 140 to 160. They said on the older models, if you have 120, that's good. Uh, 100 minimum is acceptable. We got a pressure gauge and uh, I'm running about 60. So we have to rebuild the top end of this. So... Let's get started by taking everything off because I don't have the parts, but at least we can get everything ready. But first things first, I'm going to clean up a lot of the stuff because I'm going to be putting all the parts on there to be organized about it. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I might take the plastic off the front just to make it easier and we'll go from there. So let's get cleaned up and organized and take off the top end of it, which is nice because you could do it on the quad which is cool so let's get that started so before we start i want to take the battery out which will be two phillips screws take it out put it over there on charge and uh, we'll start with that all right so with the battery out next we're going to take the air box off along with the snorkel and the carburetor we're going to disconnect it from the whole engine before we do anything else so we're going to go to that which these should be nine millimeters. That'll probably be a 10 millimeter and the snorkel just being a uh, Phillips screwdriver. So we're just gonna pull the air box out. Oops, not that part. I'm gonna need two hands for this, so. All right, so next we get rid of carburetor. Phillips screw on that front rubber nozzle. Next, we're going to take off this top piece, which will be 12 millimeter, millimeter here, here, and then one underneath with a nut. I'm going to take that off to have some room and clearance at the top. So, all right, top part is out. We're going to disconnect this hose by pulling up on it because it's just a air hose, the top cylinder. And you also want to take off the spark. I already did that because we did a compression test on it. So I figured out these are 60 and uh, you know, the guy in the video was doing one on a 30. So his was even worse. So I've already taken this apart so many times. So it should be all right. But as right now, this quad takes priority because we're going in April to uh, Maine. I want this thing running before then. I was going to get tired for that white bike that I use. So this has to be done. This is taking first priority from now on. So to get to it, we're also going to drain the oil out of it because I'm going to have to pull off some stuff here. So we're going to drain all the oil out of it. We're going to get this hose off. And then the spark plug we already took out, but also take out the spark plug. It's a size 19. And uh, let's go from there. So now we've disconnected this hose. So this top part should be free. Most part, but right now let's, uh, let's do this oil situation down here. So I'm going to grab my oil bucket and undo the cap at the bottom. So all right, next time I drain the oil, which... 
I got a special wrench here that gives me access to all the possible abilities of what this oil could be or what this oil plug could be. And then we'll slide that under. I'll just make sure that we got that closer. Okay, cool. So, the magic size of this looks like we'll try a 16 first. Nope. Maybe a 17. Try 17. Seventeen it is. Okay, that was pretty easy. Yeah, lose one more time. Okay. Let's see if we can undo it by hand. Now I'll put it towards the bucket. Go from there. And Yes, we can do it by hand. So drain the oil. Okay. Oil being drained. So let's, let's get that out of the engine. So we pull stuff, it won't piss everywhere. So we'll just leave that as is. So before we go any further than that, we're gonna take off this tensioner, which two sides is 10 millimeter. Very easy, so 10 millimeter both sides, pop that out. And then we'll continue. Uh, okay. So two 10 millimeters, this just comes right out. So I'll put those back and now we're going to do something which is set the engine to top dead center to make sure that we can put it on. So we'll take off the camshaft gear, just two eight millimeters, pop that off, then turn that and I'll show you guys how to get to that top dead center. So we're going to take this dial off at the top, you can use a flathead screwdriver, and we're going to get to the T, which I'll show you guys, which will be for top dead center, and we'll confirm it up there with the cam gear. So let's take this out, beautiful. <clears throat> so next I'm taking the camshaft sealing off. It's eight millimeter. That should be two bolts. Let's take that off. And go from there. Get the camera line with the T mark on that. Cool. So there's that. So another little discovery I made, I lined up the T in there, but even though if you can see there's a line right there that lines up with that gash, but as you can see my timing on the cam, that little dot should be straight up top here with that little nudge up here and it isn't. So I'm wondering maybe it's just off timing, which could be weird. Um, yeah, so let me check that. Oh, so I just messed with it for an hour, reset the timing. I think something jumped time at the bottom one. So I'm gonna flip it to its side and I'm almost ready to just pull the motor out again. I don't want to do that. All right, so status update on all the stuff we did. Um, Kawasaki-san is on his side. And basically what ended up happening was, uh, oh boy, was I was starting to take off the top end because we have to rebuild it regardless. And uh, notice that the cam gear wasn't aligned with a little T mark, which means it jumped timing. So <clears throat> I got my, one of my friends over who uh, is really good at that stuff. And he also said, yeah, it jumped timing. So we set everything back. We did another compression test. It still is a 60. So we still have to do the head, which not a problem or rebuild the top end. But uh, yeah, so we finally got down to the timing jumping uh issue which i guess we need to the top sprocket the cam sprocket is worn out so i ordered a new one and we also have a new timing chain because the old one had a little bit of play in it so we're going to redo those that should stop it from jumping timing and then we'll rebuild the top end 
it should have at least 100 PSI, or I believe they said new ones of those Kawasaki should have between 140 and 160. If they're old models or older models, or just basically all of them, 120 is okay. It's at minimum 100. So I'm going to try to get at least to that 100 once we rebuild the head. But as of right now, I'm pretty much at the mercy of these parts. So, and I don't like making to be continued videos, but this is going to have to be part one of, I don't know how many, because I have to wait for parts and then film it, do it. Um, so this is pretty much how this ends. So this is part one of Kawasaki Chronicles. Um, so yeah, thank you. And, uh, may the parts come here and may this thing finally run.